In this video, I'm going to give a quick overview of the image trace feature that you can use in Adobe Illustrator CS6, which is like the old live trace version, live trace feature in Adobe Illustrator CS5, 4, 3, and so forth. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start from scratch and really run through this really quick. I also have another video that gives a very thorough overview of this tool, so if you'd like to check that out, please look at my channel and you can you can check that one out as well. I'm going to go file place. I'm going to place an image in here. It's not a high contrast image, so it's not going to work too well. So you'll see the pros and cons of using this image trace feature real quick. At the top control panel, I'm going to click on image trace. If you don't see the control panel, go to window control and you'll see this button. Click it. And because it's a large image, it's telling me it's going to proceed quite slowly, and it gives me a pretty bad result. Um, what you need to do now is go to Window Image Trace, and you'll see the Image Trace panel come up, which is this panel that I have open right here to the center of my my display. Um, and you get you've got the threshold now for a high contrast image, just adjust your threshold to more or less, and it will probably give you pretty good results. For my image, not the case um, because I don't really have a high contrast image. It's not like black and white to begin with. So I can go to preset. I can change my preset. The default is black and white logo. So if you click on black and white logo, it's not going to change anything. Um, if you click on high fidelity photo, it's going to give you a high quality image that looks like a photograph. It's not going to be a photograph. It's going to be actually traced in high quality like you would trace with the pen or pencil tool. Because I've chosen a high quality image, as you see, it's taking quite a while to process the high fidelity photo um, option. So be prepared for that. If you have a high quality image, it's going to take a little bit longer. But it does produce better results, at least from a distance. It looks like they're better results. If you zoom into it, you actually start to see where it traced it. So it does have that bumpy edge look to it. Um, you may be fine with that. You may want it to be a little bit better. If you want it better, you're probably going to have to use the pen or pencil tool to draw a background image because that's pretty close to photograph quality um, as far as they get. Um, you can also choose uh, lower the amount of colors. You can just um, trace this in shades of gray. You can also choose other options as well. Line art and technical drawing are more um, more of effects really. Um, if I choose 16 colors, it obviously is going to just trace 16 paths or give me 16 colors, but it might be a little bit more of what you're looking for. It's kind of a posterized look like you would, um, posterized effect like you'd have in Photoshop or Illustrator. Now you can change the number of colors by moving the slider as I mentioned earlier. You can also go down to, well obviously the mode is color. You can change the mode to grayscale, black and white right there. Um, you can also go down to where it says palette and change this to full tone or automatic. Now because my picture was high quality, automatic and full tone are going to be the exact same, giving the exact same results, which are going to be photo quality results. So it's going to be like the preset I had earlier where I had um, high quality picture. Actually it's going to be a little bit more, um, they're going to have a little bit more paths, a few more paths to it than that other result I had earlier. But there's the results. If you click on this advanced dialog box, you can change the number of paths, the, no, the amount of corner precision, um, the amount of noise reduction right here as well. Um, you just have to play around with these to get it right for your particular photo. You also have the different methods of tracing. So if you want overlapping objects versus abutting objects, you can change this. The default is abutting. A um, that means the objects will trace right beside each other. Um, if you choose overlapping, this is going to be like a white shape on top of a green shape, obviously. Um, snap corners, curves to lines, you can choose that. And you can also choose to ignore white, which means it won't trace this. It'll actually punch a hole in your design. So you can try those out as well. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, no guarantees from me for this. Um, just something you can try. I typically suggest that you also use the pen and pencil tool in conjunction with this. Now once you get your tr tracing done, you're going to be able to click the word expand right here in your control panel. Again, if you don't see your control panel, window control will show you that panel. Click expand and it traces everything. If you go to view outline, view outline, you can see all the tracing results. I'm going to click off of it so you see all the lines. It looks like a map or something. Um, 
it's showing elevation. So I'm going to click on view preview to show my colors once again and now I need to delete some of my background. Really quickly I'm going to do that using a couple tools. You can use the direct selection tool, the white arrow that I have here. Shortcut key is A to get the direct selection tool. Hit the delete or backspace key on the keyboard and it will delete whatever area you have selected. So click and drag, delete, delete. Um, that's one tool you can use. Another tool you can use is the lasso tool. Just click and drag, make a lasso around an object, and you can delete it. So that works well if you have just one round or odd shaped object you want to delete. The last tool I'll show you is the magic wand tool. You probably haven't used the lasso or the magic wand in Illustrator, but the magic wand works quite well with this tool. I'm going to click on the white area of my design. It selects all the objects that are lightly colored in my design, which is the background and the highlight. I'm going to hit the delete key twice. It deletes that area. I'm going to click on this shadow. It selects all the colors that were in my shadows. Hit delete. Select that part of the shadow. Hit delete, delete. I'm going to select that. Hit delete, delete. And so forth. So it selects all the paths in your design that are colored similar colors really the best tool probably to use for my picture um, maybe not for yours now if you go to view outline again you can see any extra lines you have in the design you can go back with the direct selection not the regular selection not the black arrow the white arrow and click and drag over them or you can use the lasso tool for this and delete those as well um, so I have a few stray ones left behind so you can delete those and this is the design you get view preview this is my apple now, as I mentioned, it's going to be better to trace some parts of the design with the pen or pencil tool. Maybe the background, or maybe I need to smooth that out. The easiest way to do that is going to be to draw an object and send it to the back of my design. Now, if I go to Window Layers, um, you'll be able to see all of your paths. If I go to that, gives me a lot of layers. A lot of paths, excuse me, um, that it traced. Um, so that's all of them right there. So you can use those tools to trace your object. Now, if you want to go further with it, you can select with your selection tool, select the whole thing. And I'm going to choose um, in my um, object menu, I'm going to choose object expand dot dot dot. And when I do that, it expands expanded um, my objects. I'm going to choose object ungroup to make that not a group anymore. Um, and I should be able to select each individual piece and I can now select each piece and move it around. I could tear this thing apart like a puzzle or you can also um, choose a piece and right here you can double click your fill and change your fill color. Um, so that's one way you can change it. You can also make these live trace objects. In the past, you had to use a live paint bucket, or you, that was kind of work, working together with the live trace object um, option, excuse me. And you can select, let me select all so I can do this. I can click on an object, it converts it to a live paint object. It might give you a warning the first time you do this. Um, and then you can click on each object and paint it. Um, if you haven't done that before it doesn't give you that warning so now this is a live paint object so I can go object live paint which I made this live paint just by clicking on it with the live paint bucket if I hit release it released that from being a live paint object not really what I wanted I'm going back to it looks like a, topo, the, a map again showing elevation if I go to live paint object live paint and I hit expand it makes it now it's not a live object, live paint object, excuse me again. Um, so now I have to go back to object ungroup because I might be grouped it for me. But I can change it now like a normal illustrator object or normal illustrator paths that are stacked on top of each other. So you can play around with that um, to create your own design. And I hope this helps you. Um, again, using the pen and pencil tool will really be what's um, most helpful for you to create a nice, high-quality design in the end.